Listen, we, we're talking about a bunch of different stuff here, and I'm just typing things down, as you say, just to, so I don't forget certain things. Uh, but kind of backtracking to what you had brought up previously with the whole Stargate portal thing, uh, do, you've looked into it, and so I'm sure you've thought about this. If our government has this technology, which I, neither one of us will debate that, we're, we're both on the same page for that. Uh, the one thing that I don't know, and the reason why I brought up CERN and matchingly accordingly, uh, here in East Tennessee, we have a CERN-like facility called Oak Ridge. Uh, they have a particle accelerator, all that stuff. So if CERN is not that, if it's not a, a, a Stargate, it's a particle accelerator, and uh, Oak Ridge here in East Tennessee is equally then not that, it's just a, a particle accelerator, where would you suggest then that these stargates and portals are possibly located then that they'd be using, like actively using? Um, I, I think that it's possible they could be stargates or somehow uh, configured to do that by using the superconducting magnets. That would be the entryway. Uh, what confounds me a bit is that they're so widely spaced apart i can't see how you know if they made the star gate worked it would be a you know a huge opening and everybody would see that unless they could make it resonant to some certain small area that's a possibility they could do it where the magnetic waves are going in toward the center and meet at some certain point and, and uh, form an opening, that's that's possible. I mean, that's highly speculative on my part. I freely admit that, uh, but it's got to be something similar to what they did with the Philadelphia experiment. How they used uh, the large magnets in the hull of the ship, and they oscillated them, and then that oscillation of the intense magnetic fields opened up a portal so it would have to be the same kind of thing being done at cern or any of the, they have these very powerful superconducting magnets maybe there's a way to configure them without moving them closer to creating a stargate hmm. you know i what about underground stuff i mean like because i mean you have a better grasp on this like when i think stargate i'm talking like I'm thinking like uh, the movie Stargate, you know, just physical. And what I, what I found interesting is how you suggested the idea that I think you said a Stargate could be basically tuned to do certain things. It could be time travel. It could be teleportation. It could be relocation into somewhere in this universe or another realm on one device, essentially. Uh, and so I, I found that very interesting. Um, but, uh, you know, we know that they have deep underground bases all over the place. Uh, I don't personally, from my uneducated opinion, I, I wouldn't see why they couldn't just hide it underground and do oh, it all yeah, there. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they're wherever they are, they're underground because, and they have to be shielded because if you don't, I'm sure that they're going to leave a signature that can be identified by other governments or whatever from outer space. Mm. Uh, even the magnetic resonant ones. I mean, I got a tri-field meteor. You could pick up UFOs flying thousands of feet over your head. Um, if they're still using a magnetic component, there's going to be that. If they're accelerating light, like I believe they are now, um, those beams have got to go somewhere and they're going to be ultra high frequency and that can be detected. Uh, so I would think that they would use, put them underground, a lot of shielding. Otherwise you might see something ionization over the building or whatever, whenever these things crank up. So yeah, um, it would not surprise me that they're deep underground wherever they are. Well, CERN, the tunnels are underground. They're not above ground. They're actually underground. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's absolutely a huge facility. Uh, yeah, it's big. I mean, I know that here in 
East Tennessee, the Oak Ridge facility is is very large, but it's it it doesn't pale in comparison to CERN. CERN is just on another level. Uh, I think I, if off the top of my head, I believe it's 17 miles in diameter underneath Switzerland and France. Hmm. I mean, that's that's yeah. gigantic. So uh, now they want to build a bigger one. Where? I don't know where they're going to do it, but you know, the only way they can keep making particles is up the energy. And so in order to do that, you got to make a bigger one. You know, mm. the ultimate size would be this ring around the equator. Uh, but uh, that would take the resources of the entire planet to build. I don't think that one will ever be built, but that's still, you can't, you're only getting so much more energy. They're very close to the speed of light sh- slinging these things around now that increasing the size, they're only going to get, you know, a little more. They might discover a few more particles there because that's what they do. Um, but so far as Stargate is, I don't know if they have them in CERN or any of these places. It's pure speculation on my part. And I freely admit that. Uh, it's fun to think about though. Oh, I, I love th- this is like my favorite topic on the show right now. I mean, I, when I first started this show seven years ago, I was like talking a lot of like Bigfoot and stuff. And now I'm just like, let's talk about interdimensional beings. If Bigfoot's that awesome, but let's talk about these portals and how do we get to the other side? Uh, it, it's, yeah. it's becoming, because it's becoming a reality to me that these things do exist, these portals. And I, I want to bring this up to you and I don't expect you to know what I'm talking about essentially because it's such a new thing. Uh, just last Tuesday, I released an episode where I flew a guy in from, uh, well, I don't want to say where he's from, but I flew a guy into my studio here to have a sit down conversation face to face because he, he, he's one of these tech guys and talks the tech language that I don't talk. And he, uh, he, in his hobby time, he likes tracking, uh, planes that have crashed, like trying to uh, see where they crashed and, and stuff. I don't know. Uh, and in that process, he came across the idea of trying to track the Malaysian airline flight that went missing, uh, MH370. And um, in that process, he and several other people that he's working with that, you know, he has some satellite experts that he's working with and different people that a team that he just formed. And they're investigating two footages that they came across that they dug up off the internet from 2014. It's just been sitting there. Nobody's touched it. But these footages that that they're coming out with, there's satellite footage and then there's also a drone footage. But both theoretically are showing showing a plane flying through the sky. And then these three UFOs come circulating around the plane. And then there's a flash and the plane just disappears like it goes into a portal. Um, now, this is a show that I just released last week. The footage uh, I released on my Instagram last week. And it, it's the first time I ever had anything that I think I can call viral. Uh, last I checked, it had over 600,000 views. And I was just like, holy cow. Like, <laughs> I was like, I wish I wish me talking about a topic would be that interesting. But thank God that something I put, <laughs> put out is so interesting. Um, but uh, on that idea... Uh, you mentioned about the government having portals and different things like that. And, you know, you're just speculating. Well, we, we just came out with a show talking about essentially that. And we theorized that maybe this plane was teleported to a, a, a Diego Garcia military base. That's complete speculation on my part. Uh, he has theories and understandings as to why he believes that's a possibility. But uh, do you think on the surface level, that 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 we're at, and this is just you speculating. Do you think that the government and their capabilities and abilities are at a level and a point now where, if they are pursuing portals, stargates, which we have no reason to believe they wouldn't pursue it if they knew it was a possibility, do we think that they're at the point now where they could do such a thing, where actually teleport, transport a plane uh, in mid-flight? Uh, I think it's possible. It's it's just a question of what kind of technology is being used you know what kind of electromagnetic radiation is pulling off the opening of the stargate portal and so forth uh it's it's going to either be electro purely electromagnetic or magnetic in my opinion 
So you would, if it were happening, you should see uh, a dimensional portal opening up. You should see either like a green mist or maybe even a rainbow effect around the area. And so if somebody reports they see a UFO and they see a green mist uh, as it when it first appears, that gets my attention because that's what the people in the Philadelphia experiment experienced. And uh, so, I, you know, there are certain clues. I try to remember these little details because they, they could help obtain more evidence and cooperation of some sort. So I would have expected if somebody witnessed that, that they would have seen some just before they popped out of existence or wherever they went to a rainbow effect because, you know, the, the electromagnetic spectrum, you know, you're, you're messing with uh, the refraction index of space. You're messing with the permittivity and permeability. These are going to affect the way, you know, light is coming through and it's bending and you'll get, refraction reflection all of these things happening in and around that area because of the strong fields mm. so if somebody claims that they just see somebody pop out and there's nothing like that around i'm a little skeptical but they say yeah there's a green we saw the first a green mist or or, or a rainbow effect then uh that piques my interest a lot more do i believe they have the technology probably because they've had access to all kinds of future technologies that they're just simply not going to tell us about.